you know, you have all these bearing pointers in the glass world today. So if you look at a typical G1000, you've got your HSI in the middle and then you've got two bearing pointers, which essentially do what this yellow needle at the top does. They essentially point at something and you know, the way people use them now is they just sort of read the radial off the tail saying, oh, now I'm passing through the 240 degree radial. And that's fine. But what I'm gonna show you here is if we understand how to navigate a needle like this using an NDB, then we can also navigate a needle like this in a glass panel airplane pointed at any waypoint. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned 20 years on the flight line. Hello aviators, welcome back to the Finer Points. You know, in today's world, there are a lot of glass panel airplanes. Even if you're flying an older aircraft, many people are retrofitting those with glass, um, you know, primary flight displays or systems that allow navigation via GPS. And a lot of those systems, they give you a little HSI with a course deviation indicator, but they also give you bearing pointers, right? Things that can just simply point at a fix. Think of the G1000. You get one HSI, horizontal situation indicator, and then you get two bearing pointers, and those pointers can point at anything. They can point at a VOR, at a GPS waypoint, they can point at an NDB if you can find one. Um, and I think the, the, the irony here, the really funny part to me, somebody who's been doing this for over 20 years, is that NDB, that is ADF navigation, the thing you probably did years ago on your written test, is really back in play because that is the original bearing pointer navigation. So if you want to take your skills beyond just simply pointing that bearing at a station and knowing what radial you're on or you know where you are in relation to it, if you want to take the game up a notch and be able to actually hold specific navigation courses using a bearing pointer, we have to discuss ADF navigation. And I'm so happy that I know this and that I can pass this on to you because I think this will change your game when you're navigating, even via GPS using a bearing pointer. So um, I'm still in quarantine here in Palm Springs. Recently I did a ground lesson with Joe on this very topic um, and that's what I want to show you here in this week's video. I'll go through this pretty quickly but um, the main thing is you know looking up at the ADF number one on the top right up here this this thing is to really see it differently. Try not to see it like north you know and 010 and 020 and 030 and around the compass rows. Um, it's not that important to see it that way. What's better is to see north as a zero position and to see south as a zero position and to measure degrees off of zero. So, of course, zero one zero would be 10 degrees to the right. Zero two zero would be 20 degrees to the right. But if we move to the left, three five zero would also be 10 degrees to the left. Three four zero would be 20 degrees to the left and so on. And you'll see why that's important. But if I could redraw this whole instrument, if I could change it, that's the way I would change it. I would fix that card in space and just write a zero at the top, a zero at the bottom and degrees all the way around. So let's imagine you're pointed right at the NDB. Now this part's pretty easy. Everybody can get that, you know, you're gonna track directly to that station. Um, but to get on a specific bearing to or a specific bearing from, this is information that has kind of gotten lost along the way. And um, I think it's important to resurrect it because as we were talking in detail, the first time we tried this, you know, you have all these bearing pointers in the glass world today. So if you look at a typical G1000, you've got your HSI in the middle and then you've got two bearing pointers, which essentially do what this yellow needle at the top does. They essentially point at something. And you know, the way people use them now is they just sort of read the radial off the tail saying, oh, now I'm passing through the 240 degree radial. And that's fine. But what I'm going to show you here is if we understand how to navigate a needle like this using an NDB, then we can also navigate a needle like this in a glass panel airplane pointed at any waypoint, a GPS fix, a VOR, or an NDB. Um, and even more than can, I would say we probably should or might have to because if you look at the G1000 again, there's only one HSI, that's it. There's no way to have two needles like you and I have been doing in the steam gauge world. You have the HSI, 
and then you have bearing pointers, and that's all you got. Before I show Use you how... This for some sort of secondary navigation, as you describe it, right? So you've got your primary navigation, or you can actually use it as primary navigation. Then. Yeah, yeah. The way I describe that, so like primary navigation is like the, the needle that you're following, literally your road in the sky. And secondary navigation tells you kind of where you are along the way. It like identifies cross radials and stuff like that. So the way pe most people use these bearing pointers, like if you look at this now, like they use it as secondary. You know, if there was some station magically out to, or so, you know, this station here, you could say, well, now I'm passing through the 270 degree radial or whatever. Now I'm passing through the 300 degree radial. And all I'm doing is reading the tail of the needle. But what I'm going to show you here is that you can use it as, as primary, meaning I could fly and pick up a, a specific course. If someone said, Jason, I need you on the 330 degree bearing 2, I could get on the 330 degree bearing 2. And where this might come in in today's world, for example, is let's imagine you're on a feeder route to pick up an ILS. And the feeder route specifies that you need to fly outbound from some VOR, like you need to fly the Modesto 020 degree radial until you intercept the approach course. Well, approach courses are really sensitive. They come in and get gone before you even know they were there. So in that circumstance, if you had the ability to do it, you might prefer to put the approach course in your HSI so you're watching it and you're ready to see that needle come in so you can make the turn and, and navigate the feeder route via your bearing pointer. If you look, this is the Concord LDA 19 right, and imagine you're at Rejoy, and you want to fly that feeder route, that solid black line that says 254 degrees, to intercept this approach course. Well, an LDA approach stands for localizer type directional aid. I mean, that's a localizer. That's not a VOR radial. That's a localizer like an ILS. Those are extremely sensitive needles. And you would probably want that approach course right there in your HSI so that you could see the needle come and go. Um, rather than try to guess, oh, I, I should be there because I've gone 10 miles, you know, <laughs> or whatever, right? You want to see it. So in that case, you might choose to navigate on your bearing pointer. Um, in this case, point it over here towards Skaggs Island. And you'd be inbound on the 074 radial, which would be the 254 bearing to it. And you'd just be using your bearing pointer to fly that specific course of 254 and then have your HSI set up to capture this inbound course when it comes in. So that's the skill you have here. I mean, of course, you know, in today's world, we all, a lot of us have moving maps or whatever, but, um, but this is not a GPS approach. And if for some reason you didn't have an updated database and, you know, you didn't have ForeFlight with you or whatever, there's no reason you can't fly this approach like, like I'm about to show you, right? So anytime you're navigating with a bearing pointer, there are golden rules to remember. There are two of them. One, the head of the needle always falls. Assuming you're not turning, it doesn't matter which direction you're moving, the head of the needle always falls. If I'm flying a straight line, it doesn't really matter which direction I'm flying, the head of the needle always falls. See that? Yep. Okay, and so there's no way that can't happen. So that's important to remember. The second one, the head of the needle always points toward the station or toward the desired course. So if you want that course or you want to head to the station, you always turn toward the head of the needle. Knowing that, here's the process, and I think it's a four-step process. If, you, if I was asked to be on the 330 degree bearing to the station, let me get a little farther off of it, but if that's what I was asked to do, the first step in the process is to parallel the course. So the first step I would do is turn to 330, and that step is only to determine the degrees of deflection off of the zero point. Remember we said north should be a zero point. So if I look up at the top there and I see zero and then I go left 10, I'm sort of counting on my toes, 20, 30, looks like about a 35 degree deflection to the left, right? Yep. Okay, good. The second step is to turn toward the needle twice the amount of deflection. So I turn left, not just one. Oops, sorry, I'm looking the wrong one here. I turn left not just once, um, but I turn left 35 so that I'm pointed right at it, and then an additional 10, 20, 30, 5 for the intercept. 
and I'm moving in space. Remember we said the head of the needle always falls. So now I know that I'm on this course when the degrees of deflection off of zero on the top equal the degrees of deflection on my heading indicator to the desired course. And what I mean is, if you look at the heading indicator, right now we're headed 255. So let's count on our toes. 265 would be 10. 275 would be 20. 285 would be 30. 295, 40. 305, 50. 315, 60. 325, 70. And 330, 75 degrees of deflection to the right is where my desired course is, yeah? Yep. Um, and then I can look up at the top on my ADF, which I wish I could just go ahead and redraw, but that is 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. We're at 60 degrees now. The head of the needle always falls. So I know if I just keep trucking in this direction, that the head of the needle will fall to a 75 degree deflection. Right around there. Yep. And I can visualize that too if I superimpose in my mind, if I just take that n yellow needle and try to see it in the middle of my heading indicator, it should make it should look like that's pointing at about the course I want, yeah? And so then all I have to do now is turn to the heading and boom, I'm on the 330 degree bearing two. Cool. That's how that works. Now it's Joe's turn to give it a try. Let's see how he does. 236 Sierra Papa, I need you inbound on the 360 degree bearing two, the ABC or the AB and DB. <laughs> First we turn to north, we turn to the bearing they want to parallel the course. Good. And then look up at the ADF here. We've got 10, 20, 30, about 35 degrees off to the left. Yep, maybe a little more, but yeah, uh, something like that, 37-ish, yep. Okay, 37-ish. Uh, so let's turn 10, 20, 3.30, so maybe 3.37 to the left, and then add another 37 after that. So I'm going to turn left. Tell me when to stop. There's 10 degrees, 20 okay, degrees, 30 degrees, yeah. 35, you said. That's about right. right. there. That's another, a, another 35. Okay, good. And, you know, let me just point out, too, that if you didn't know how far you should turn on that first turn... You're basically just turning to point at it. So you just turn until the yellow needle's vertical. And then anything you do after this, I mean, I know we said double it to keep it simple, but anything you do after this is an intercept toward that course you want. So let's keep it simple now and keep doubling it. So then we go another, how far do you say, 35? Yep, it's going at 35. All right, so let's go 10, 20, 30, 35. Looks like a heading of 290. Nice clean Okay. Number. And then we said we're going to fly straight and the head of the needle always falls. Okay, so we need to get to the 330. So actually, hold on. We need, we're headed to north. That's what we want is north. Oh, that's right. That's right. So we're going to be right at, looks like 070 on the ADF. Yep, I agree. And let me just count on my toes to make sure I do agree, but it's 290 to 300 is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. And it's easy to see 70 on the top because it's 70. Yep, that makes sense. So I'm going to keep flying, and you're telling me that I would turn north right about now, right? Yep. Okay, let's try it. Would you look at that? You are inbound on the 360 right degree bearing to it. Perfect. All right, aviators, that's all for this episode of The Finer Points. A huge thanks to Joe for letting me put his flight training on the internet for everybody's benefit. Um, if you want to see us work it off the tail, which is pretty much the same, maybe a little bit more complicated, um, the full ground lesson here is available on Patreon. Um, I really appreciate that support, especially during this downtime. And I'm working to bring you as much content as I can live on Instagram, Monday through Friday at 0900 at Learn The Finer Points. Um, a huge thanks to the sponsors and to all the patrons um, and to you, the best fans on the internet, for watching this video. Please come to learnthefinerpoints.com, get your free gift video. I'm Jason Miller, and until next time, be safe, stay healthy, stay home, and when you fly again, fly your best. <laughs>